Hey Eurovision fans, Bambi Thug has won your song with their song Doomsday Blue and will represent Ireland at Eurovision 2024. We're going to listen and react to their live performance on the Late Late Show, discuss Ireland's 10 year record at the contest, analyse our qualification record and see could this get Ireland into the final for the first time since 2018. So let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So in this episode today, I'm going to be focusing on Bambi and their performance at the Late Late Show, all the visuals and the song and how I think this can do Eurovision. In case you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen that I went to your song. It was a very fun and drunken affair. I'm going to do a separate video for that where I talk about the production and the show and what I thought of all the results, etc. This is just all about Bambi Thug. So in case you aren't aware, Bambi Thug is non-binary, so their pronouns are they, them, which is something really cool and new. I actually believe that they're the first ever artist to go to Eurovision as a non-binary person. We've had artists who've been to Eurovision before come out after they've been to Eurovision, for example, Montaigne. I don't think we've ever had someone who's been non-binary at the contest. So this could actually be a very interesting story, kind of groundbreaking. I think it's kind of awesome that Ireland are the first people to break that glass ceiling. So that's a really, really cool, representation for non-binary people at Eurovision. Before we take it on, let's get a little bit about the artist. I'm not gonna say their first name because <laughs> it might get me demonetized. Let's just say the, f the first name starts with the letter C and then the surname is Robinson. So C Robinson, they're from Cork. They have a dance background. They used to be a ballerina and actually their career was more focused towards dancing it seemed until they broke their arm and then made a little bit of a switch. They describe their music as Ouija pop, which is a cool phrase that they've made up to describe their own music and there's elements of witchcraft, kind of paganism and dark elements in it. I actually met them after the show, but I'll talk about that after we've done the reaction. So I've already done an initial reaction to the song when I did my Your Song video. I'm still gonna be listening to the song, but I'm gonna be focusing a little bit more on the visual aspect and what possible staging that we'll be getting in Malmo. Also kind of obsessed with that Bambi Thug's father is Swedish. So the song is called Doomsday Blue and it's about realizing your potential and having people overlook you. Bambi Thug, Doomsday Blue, wanna know my secret band? Okay, exciting. So I was standing in the bottom left corner. So this is gonna be a new perspective for me. Really good use of the lights there, playing on the light shining down. Okay, sounds good at the start. Those LEDs have got beautiful thorns and you can't see them that well. Styling's amazing. The attention to detail is incredible. Yeah, these thorn visuals, you can't see them well. They're super cool though. And those dancers are amazing. My favorite backup dancers ever. The costumes are incredible. And that transition from the thorns into the sky castle, showing off their dance moves as well. This real poise and elegance. Just some nice simple dancing, but also doing some ballerina moves. Okay, a little bit of a hair issue, don't worry, we'll work that out. We'll have the best stylists available for them. Some kind of like symbols now, some like Norse Celtic symbols, a bit of witchcraft. Lovely command of the voice there. The vo vocals are going to improve between now and Mama. But overall this is looking good, you know, we know Lele Show production isn't perfect. These dancing costumes now, you can see these OM signs down the side, really love that detail. And then even the dance is changing as well, you know, being gross at the start into this kind of like more weird during this course. Beautiful shot here, there. They're sounding really great here. Yeah, I think great idea for the LEDs already and this is gonna improve, but it's kind of fantasy. It's interesting, exciting. Sounding great on camera now. I think this sounds really good. Yeah, and this is a great bit to show off the vocals. Great use of different colors as well. Now we've got the red palette with the blues and then the yellows in the chorus. Everything's gonna get glammed up between now and Malma. Everything's gonna get more expensive and cool. Yes, boo. <laughs> this is the wow moment, I think, this this ending. So now this is where they're gonna have like pyro, something big happening. 
So I'd like to see more energy now, more movement. And this move with the clock, I really like that. Great striking, really awesome. Great commitment in, it, in all the movements. You can see this dance background. <laughs> you can hear me screaming somewhere. <laughs> the crowd really did go crazy for this one right there. And you can really hear the audience. We were going crazy for this. Yeah, really cool for me to watch that back the first time because obviously when I was in the studio, it sounds different and I'm seeing it just from one angle. So I'm not seeing the camera cuts that they're using. This is absolutely amazing. I am so freaking happy that this one, this is interesting, it's vivacious, it's different, it's colorful, it's got a really, really strong point of view, it's exciting, it's really, really risky. It's the riskiest thing that we've sent since Dust and the Turkey, but that was a bad risk. This is a good risk. This is someone who's incredibly artistic, musical, has a really, really strong identity. They are a trained dancer. They've got a lot of personality. They've got connections. They were talking during their interview about how they've got all these different pieces that they're wearing. There was a little bit of Irish dance. There was some kind of um, witchcraft stuff going on. These are all the people that they've met in this kind of like music scene that they exist in. And they've got all these like amazing influences. It's they're like the representative of a community of art. So I'm absolutely obsessed with the fact they send this. I gotta be honest, I didn't think Arlen was capable of sending something like this. This is a very pleasant surprise. You know, the bookies had it that Erica was gonna win, and then a lot of us were thinking that possibly Next in Line could as well. You know, Arlen doesn't really have a, a history of sending risky songs. In France, we don't really get that many risky options in the national final anyway, in the first place. So maybe it's just that we didn't have a choice. But yeah, I absolutely love this. I think Bambi's a fantastic performer. They seem absolutely and utterly meticulous in every single detail. I met them afterwards at the OJE Ireland. By the way, if you are Eurovision fan in Ireland, join the OJE club. It is one of the best OJE clubs in Eurovision right now. And they had a party afterwards and I met a Bambi Thug. Very striking person. Really just from head to toe, everything is thought of. The hair, the headpiece, the clothes, the tattoos, the shoes, the socks, everything. There's like literally the amount of thought put into every single item of clothing or anything that's on their skin is just incredible. I got big Nightmare Before Christmas vibes. They've got a very petite figure, a very striking face, really looks like Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't think they would mind me saying that. I'm pretty sure they would find that as a compliment because I do get a lot of inspiration from Nightmare Before Christmas. I think they spend more time thinking about what socks they're gonna wear than some other artists spend doing their entire outfit. Like, let's face it, some artists will just put on some makeup and a nice dress and they're ready to go. Bambi is spending like weeks, months, years collecting all these different things that they're wearing. So this is an extremely artistic person who is, I think, gonna just do everything they can. I hope they keep some of the community designers from the grassroots that they had, but I would like to see them also work with some kind of more established, bigger fashion designers as well to bring like really high class. I'm totally obsessed with the backup dancers' costumes. I love this like, kind of Gengar vibes, like a nightmare shadow personification with a couple of lines on it. I'm also getting some Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess vibes as well. I love the ohm writing down the side, which is a type of old Irish writing on stones, which used lines. So there's lots of references here, but those are probably my favorite costumes I've ever seen from backup dancers ever. Like I saw them and I was like, wow, that is super, super, super cool. And that totally made me pay attention. I also love that Bambi's an independent artist. I think it shows that an independent artist can when you're a song for the future. I think this is gonna lay down the foundations that next year's gonna be even better and your song is gonna keep growing and growing. But I'm gonna talk about that more when I do my Your Song analysis video. Okay, let's talk a bit about the song. I think the song is really great. It's jarringly different. It's really attention grabbing. It's definitely got some moments in it that like rock outro into the screaming is gonna get a lot of people's attention, whether it's for the good or the bad reason. That's not important. The main thing is that people actually watch your performance at all. And people are gonna watch this because that opening tableau with them looking very <laughs> striking, people are gonna stop and wanna watch. If they hate it, that's fine, but they're gonna be watching. And that's the first obstacle that you have at Eurovision is get people to actually engage with your performance at all. 
I also think it's clever that the song has this like more calmer moment because anyone who finds the rockier parts a little bit too jarring, there is this like calm, smooth bit. It just gives a little bit of a reprieve from the kind of chaos that's happening before that. Karya did that really well last year as well, where you have this like heavy, intense metal rap going into the Schlager sound. Having that smoother element can really just help act as an olive branch to the kind of more mainstream people who want to hear something a little bit more familiar. So I think that's really, really clever. And I think that's one of the main hooks in the song and the line, I guess you'd rather have a star than a moon. And I love that switch of the LEDs where we had these thorns in a kind of nightscape background going into this cloud castle, giving some like fantasy computer games, a nice softer feel. I think a lot of people are gonna love that sky castle image. I think it's so pretty. And then we had the moon at the end with the clock. So there's some brilliant ideas here. And I think this is only gonna get better because the LEDs at Malmo are gonna be even cooler. They've got way more things to work with technically. They're gonna have choreographers to work with if they want. Much, much more intricate LEDs. So really you don't have a lot of choice when you're in the late late show they don't have the same degree of like steady cams and all that people to run around you and there's not the space on the stage to do that so it's you're kind of just getting like basic pan shots and basic side angles that's it so that's one of the reasons why everyone looks a little bit flatter and all of that's going to change when this goes to mama the sky is the limit for the imagination and the song has got so many interesting things in it that you can do something wild and weird and it's organic to the song as opposed to if you have a song, we're gonna walk a thousand miles because my love will never give up. What visuals can you do for that? There's nothing, you haven't got anything to work with. This has edge and risk to it. And that means you can do something wild on stage. So how's this gonna do at Eurovision? So you may have known that I did a video last year, What's Wrong With Ireland? I'll link it here where I looked at all the problems that Ireland's having in our national final. Since I started this channel in 2019, I've been saying every single year that Ireland needs a big, big shakeup. I've always had my little rant in my Irish videos. So I'm so excited to actually be positive about the Irish entry this year. It's such a joy for me to come and do this video and not have to be like, this is all the things that's wrong with Ireland and Eurovision. Anyway, if you wanna know our history, you can go watch that video, but this is a huge step forward. Let's look at Ireland in the last 10 years and we can see that we've only qualified once in the last nine years. So all that red is non-qualifications. And then you see 2018, we have a 16th place. That's Rhino Shocknessy, which I thought was an absolutely amazing song with really, really pretty staging. I do hope Wiring comes back at some point. The results are getting a little bit better. 41st to 37th to 34th to 31st, climbing roughly three places per year. It's very slow progress though. But yeah, overall, there's a larger problem that we have, which is that our broadcaster RT has not been investing enough into the national final. I think Bambi Thug winning can help push this forward. I think this song can do really well. First of all, I gotta emphasize that even if this song doesn't qualify, I still think this is gigantic progress around. I'm already extremely happy with what Ireland have done this year. Qualifying would be a bonus. Doing even better would be a unexpected marvel. So I don't want the conversation this year to be about Ireland needs to qualify to justify this being a success. This is already a success in my opinion. This is Ireland breaking the mold, trying something new, realizing that we have a problem. Just acknowledging the problem exists, accepting that we need to move away from things like Wild Youth and Next in Line and take a new direction. We need to modernize, we need to expand our horizons, make the national final more varied. And this does that because it breaks down barriers in so many different ways, musically, visually, even just from them being a non-binary person. There's just so many new, fresh things about this. Do I think this can qualify? Absolutely. This is so edgy and different. They have so much to work with. And whatever they do is gonna be totally unique from everyone else because there's very few people who come with this witchcraft vibe. Normally, I have to admit, there is quite a lot of witchery this year. We have Veronica from Slovenia. We potentially have a witch song for Poland, which hasn't been confirmed yet. So yes, it does seem like this year has an abnormally large amount of witches. But I still think that Bambi Thug is gonna stand out with their witch vibe. So visually, this is gonna be super unique. Sonically, this is gonna be really unique. It's gonna stand out in miles. Some people are gonna hate it, absolutely. I've already seen people leaving me comments on Twitter and on YouTube saying they just don't like this song. But the people who love this really, really love this. And people in the non-binary community or people who have like a very alternative viewpoint, obviously this is a smaller group, but they really love this. I've seen a couple of people already on, on um, Instagram and Twitter who are like starting campaigns for Bambi. They are like, this is their champion. This is their representative. They feel 
represented in the contest for the first time ever and they are like all in on Bambi and Bambi's really involved in the community this isn't just a stepping stone for them I think they really want to go to Eurovision and they're going to do the absolute maximum they can I feel like this is going to be a very exciting exhilarating show the way the televote works where you can only vote for people you can't vote against those people who hate this it doesn't really matter the people who love it are going to vote for it and this is going to be some people's number one and that's what you need to qualify from a televote only semi is you can't be people's fifth sixth seventh all the time you have to be even a small amount of people's favorite and they're going to vote for you en masse obviously we need to see what's happening with the semi-final draw which is happening on january 30th but i think even if this is put in the first half of the semi-final it's not going to open you wouldn't open with something that is so out there i don't think you put it second or third either i think you need to kind of warm up the crowd first so i think if this was going to be drawn in the first half it would be at the end anyway which means it's pretty much guaranteed to get a good draw obviously if it's second half it could potentially close the show it does have that kind of like ending feel like it's doomsday it's the end of the semi i think the song is going to get a good draw and i think that's going to help the qualifications we need to see what other songs are in the semi with it Obviously, if we have both Poland and Slovenia, the witch vibe might not feel as unique because there might be two other witch songs coming before it. But Poland's song hasn't even been chosen yet. Slovenia's has, so that is a possibility. But Slovenia, I think, is going for more like a historical, classical vibe, whereas Bambi's more dark, pagan feeling. And if this makes the final, how could it do? I think this has enough edge that it could potentially get onto the left side of the scoreboard. It's so early to say now. I don't know what its competition is. I don't know what the semifinals are. So, you know, it's guesswork. But the fact Ireland jumped from 26th on the odds up to 16th, that's a really good sign. People seeing that this actually has some winner potential because it has that X factor that you need to be considered as something that can win. With something like We Are One, the conversation was always, can this scrape into the final in 10th spot and then come last in the final? Whereas with this, it's like, yeah, I can see this coming last in the semi-final. Theoretically, that's not impossible. I can also see it coming top three in the semi-final and then being left side of the scoreboard. I love the fact that it's got that broad range of this could go really, really well or really, really badly. That risk is exciting and I feel like the risk is worthwhile and it's gonna move Ireland forward as opposed to something that's got a very narrow range of possibilities between maybe 9th and 12th in the semi and then guaranteed last in the final. That's not exciting. Just kind of making up the numbers in the final. I don't think this is going to make up the numbers in the final. I think it's going to stand out and people will be talking about Ireland in a very positive way. RT are really good actually giving a lot of artistic freedom. My, Michael Killey's always said, look, you can do whatever you want. He'll hopefully give them a little bit of resources and they can start working. I say they've got millions and billions of ideas. There's gonna be so much stuff going on here and hopefully they can just pick the best ones, work with some really great choreographers and visual people and make a really cool, unique package that puts us on the maps for the first time in a long time. Okay, so that's what I thought about Bambi Thug singing Doomsday Blue. What did you think? Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Do you think this can qualify? If it qualifies, what do you think it could do in the final? What do you think that they should change about their performance? And what do you think that they should keep? Let me know. Thank you to Myra and Elvin Dork for supporting me on Buy Me Coffee. No new donations on PayPal, but you can support me there as well if you want. And of course, thank you to all my patrons all over the world for patronizing me. On my Patreon channel, you can hear the original version of the audios when I get copyrighted. You can also be part of our Mario Vision scoreboard group. You can get updates about the channel and you can do a free trial as well if you want. So go check that out if you're a fan of the channel. But as always, thank you so much for watching.